1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 26. Therefore, I do not run like a man running aimlessly. I do not fight like a man beating the air. A tragic story once occurred of a woman and a son walking along a river bank. So the woman was in a later stage of pregnancy and held a toddler son by the hand as they journeyed. Suddenly, the little boy slipped and fell into the river. The woman in a condition could not jump into the river to save a son's life. She cried and cried for help. After a little while, a couple of men heard her, crying desperately and hurried toward her. They jumped into the river and brought out the lifeless infant who had drowned in the river. The woman had not realized the river was on a knee deep. She realized this when the men ran into the river to rescue her son. Thus, she could have run into the river herself in spite of her condition. Alas, it was too late. She had been unaware of the approximate death of the muddy water. A majority of people in life are like the pregnant woman, ignorant of the journeys of life. Some people will never have a good marriage just because they refuse to test. Let me test a little bit this thing called submission. That's how ignorant you are. All you need is to test sometimes. Maybe when the child went, if she could only just try and say, She could discover that it wasn't that deep. She could have saved her own son. The spiritual life of many people are in this way. Unaware of what lies ahead of daily activities. The irony is that many Christians are dining with the devil. There is no way you can dine with the devil and thinking God will come and sit on that table. He cannot. Because you will be dead. Some people are dining with the devil every day of their life. There is a veil of ignorance covering their spiritual world. Eyes. People are managing their affairs. They know little or nothing about. You are entering in things that you think that you know. You are managing things that you don't even understand. You are trying to manage things that you literally know. For instance, there are teachers who should be student? Trophies. So many teachers today, they are supposed to be students, not teachers. They claim to be teachers while they are students. Deliverance ministers who need deliverance. Jamana kombe akutowe pepo ya usharati yemo nye musharati akikwekelea na kongezea. Sikutowa. Christians who should be learning how to be true followers of Christ. You are a Christian, but you don't even know what it means to follow Christ. It is the reason why you don't even know how to worship. Every time, like a little child, someone has to tell you, kneel down. This is a fighter who is not familiar with ease or a weapon of warfare. Or a soldier who does not recognize his or her enemies. And where they are located, he has no idea about them. He fight battles that he doesn't know. They beat him every day. He worshipped. He was helped and taught. Given an exercise out to worship on Sunday. By the time he walked out of Sunday, he, he goes home. He can't remember anything. He doesn't know which battle he fights. That's the veil of ignorance. Paul says, he says that, I therefore so run, not as, and certainly, so fight I, not as one that do what? Beat the hair. No. Paul did not mice his word. He spoke with directness. He did not waste his punches by shadow boxing. He fought with spiritual precision. His spiritual eyes were alert. That's why the Bible says, don't punch in the hair. That's how Christians are living. That's why you are tired. 
That's why you can't do every time you're beaten. Every time you're beaten, your punches are out of ignorance. You pray, you pray amiss. You've been praying, you pray, you are not receiving. Why are you not receiving? Because you are praying amiss. The main hindrance to any form of success is lack of knowledge. When you have a fail of ignorance, it means you have no knowledge. You can be taught. You listen to principles every day, but they don't enter because you have a fail of ignorance in you. Many homes, ministries, callings, finances, and so on are destroyed as a result of ignorance. Some people, they were supposed to be millionaires. God just released 300,000. They reached because of fail of ignorance. God just tested you with a little. The Bible says, whoever is faithful with little will be faithful with much. All the Lord did gave you some 300,000. You went crazy. Like tomorrow does not exist. The Bible says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because they have rejected knowledge, I will also reject them. I will reject you. It says, that I shall be not priest to me. Hosea 4.6 My people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Because you have rejected knowledge, knowledge, I also reject you as my priest. As my priest. Because you have, you have ignored the law of your God, I will ignore your children. I will ignore your children. Our destiny is like it is intertwined. We cannot separate our children from our destiny. The right thing that we give them will benefit them. It said the mountain of problems people have is in their mountain of what? An arrogant young man one sort what Socrates. You know Socrates? The great philosopher for knowledge. When he finally confronted Socrates, his arrogance and pride were very apparent to what? Socrates. The philosopher decided to teach the man a lesson, this young man. So he took him to a pool of water deep enough for the purpose. Socrates then asked the young man, What do you want? And the man answered, I want knowledge. Socrates then pulled the young man down with great strength and held him. What do you want? The boy answered, I want knowledge. The man was dipped into the water for the second time. This time, a little longer. Choo! What do you want? Removes him from the water. He asks the same question. What do you want? The young man, he answered with great breathing difficulty. <laughs> I, want, I want knowledge. Again, the third time, he was given the same treatment. Come here. He asked him the same question. Finally, he was asked the question again by Socrates. What do you want? This time the man gasped. Gasped for her and cried out, I want hair. This was the correct answer. When he said, I want hair, he was removed from the water. Because at that time, what you need is hair, not knowledge. Your marriage is not working. You are insolent. A woman who cannot respect her husband full of malice. Nothing is working in your marriage. You are there in prayer. <laughs> Lord, why don't you come for me? Lord, why don't you take care of this marriage? The Lord is asking, what do you want? You keep saying, I want blessings, Lord. Take care of this marriage. The Lord said, no, that's not what you want. What you need right now is submission. That's how we are. Things are not working in your life. Unaishu sharati. Uko kila siku mbela ya yesu. What is wrong with this guy? What you need? What do you want? Lord, I want to grow. Not to grow. What you need right now is holiness. 
this was the correct answer. Because when he was put in the water, knowledge will not save him from water. What he needed was hair. When you are put in the water, the question you are in suffering, you are going through all these things. Don't go pray, Lord remove me. God remove me here. God ask, what do I need to go through this? The Lord shall provide it. That's why we've gone for so many shortcuts. Because without struggle, without all this thing that we go in life, you will never mature. Ignorance doesn't just go like that. Ignorance, the Lord has to put you in a school that will teach you things. Some things don't go. Even as I preach, I jump, I, I make some assault here. You will not remove ignorance. But there are things the Lord will do and put you that will take that ignorance away. For example, Giving a wrong answer to your problem. Every time you have a problem, you always give the wrong answers to your problem. There are some men that will never be blessed because they have not accepted to become men in the society. And the Lord will not stop. Since he's the one who saved you and called you, changed your life, he will make sure that he put you, he continue putting you in this world. Until a man seeks knowledge and as much as the air he breathed, he can be argued. He is not prepared to do what? To learn. A person such as this will forever remain a spiritual what? Mediocre. Spiritual mediocrity is about ignorance. You are, you are so ignorant about life you don't know what life is. God is calling to the place of smartness. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his de devices. True or false? This is the word of God. Satan can basically bend you out of ignorance. You don't know how you are living on a daily basis. Some people are joining some work that belongs to the devil. Because of lack of knowledge. You are full of ignorance. Your life is full of mountains of ignorance. You just go and join a group of people. There are people that are advancing the cause of homosexual without even knowing. When I did my undergraduate program, there's a course we did called Man and Sin. There is something that we call social sin. You can be working in a company that every day you're building a terrorist bomb that will kill thousands of people every day of your life without even knowing. Homosexuals are everywhere. They are pumping money. They are churches that are built by homosexuals. Homosexuals. And they have silenced those pastors. You're so ignorant. You're just living like every day. Ah, you Christian, you see too much. What do you mean we see too much? The spirit of God was given to us to see too much. The Bible says, he shall teach you all things. The purpose is to see too much. It is said that the first kind of ignorance is the enlightened of not knowing. Some people live like this. It is a great strategy for someone to be in this world without a clue about his mission on earth and the means to accomplish it. That's destiny. You struggle. You don't even know how you're going to live this life. Now, this is where it gets interesting. When Paul addressed the Hellenes, philosophers in the city of Hatton, he made this statement. He said this, For while I was passing through and examining the object of your worship, I also found an altar with this inscription. To Anon, is it true? In the book of Acts, he saw that. He said, I saw an inscription. To Anon, God, therefore, what you worship in ignorance, this I proclaim to you. Which God are you worshiping that is unknown? So I come in your world to proclaim to you that God that is not known. Let me make him known, to, be known to you. That's what Paul basically was trying to say. You should ask yourself, do I fall, fall in this category? Do you worship a God who is unknown? That could be marriage. That could be business, finances, parity, ministry. Some of you are parents who have no idea 
of what they do that is a non God to you? How do I fall in this category? That's what it is. In your finances, in your parenting, in your ministry. Go check. How am I failing? What is the part of ignorance that? What is the part that I'm not seeing? When you live like that, you will know. Number two, there is also the ignorance of acquiring inadequate fact. It sounds like this one look a little bit better. There is also the ignorance of acquiring inadequate fact. But let me tell you, this one, this person, unlike the first person, has some knowledge, but the knowledge is not sufficient. Therefore, this man is worse than the first because in actuality, he knows nothing. This is the categories of leaders that do this. They should be led. Shepherd that should be sheep. Teachers that should be. This is the proverb. One-eyed man that is leading the community of the blind. That's what Jesus says. If the blind lead the blind, both shall do it. This one is worse. Have you ever met those leaders that they teach you, you grow with them. They teach you, we grow with them. But you meet that leader the following day, he opens his mouth, he speaks something, you go like, wow. You live on Yako Karanayo too. That is how you should lead. That's the place God wants us. Not ignorance. That every time you open your mouth, oracles, they come out. Because you learn how to master your heart. You are always up there. People follow you. They can't reach you. That's why Elijah is walking. He's telling Elisha. If you see me when I'm being taken. Because he knows that that is not going to be easy. Number three. The misinterpretation of information can be disastrous. That one can kill you and take you in hell as you see. In this instance. The man has the fact which may be adequate. But he has the problem of application. He does not use the knowledge correctly. Paul was well learned in religion. True false. Matters concerning the Jewish law. However, he was spiritually ignorant until he encountered who? And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who enabled me. For that, he counted me faithful. This is Paul talking. He became a Christian with a special mission after he had been a violent terrorist. True force. This guy was a terrorist. He made sure that he killed responsible for the death of many Christians. True force. Yet he knew he had the knowledge, he had all these things, but he was ignorant. He had a veil of ignorance. And he went terrorizing, killing people. That's what he went to. That's why this third man is very dangerous. Please don't walk like that. You can have the word of God, but you're still ignorant. You can be walking in church, but you're still ignorant. You can be in marriage, but still ignorant. You can be in business, but still ignorant. Number four. The fourth form of ignorance is that of wrong expectation. Dr. Larry Betts, this is a Jew. He explained the fact that wealth does not die, but it is transferred. The ownership does change hand. But wealth itself does not die. It's like what scripture says in Proverbs chapter 13 verse 22. It says, and the wealth of the sinners are laid up for the Who is a just? A just the one is the one who lives. He knows that his daily life is in Christ. This will not be available for you unless you have the knowledge of how to obtain it. When a person has the right information but has the wrong expectation, it is just as useless as not having any knowledge at all. Wrong expectations. Notice this. Before Jesus was born, Israel was said to have, to have had the correct data about the coming of the Messiah or the Christ that God had promised them. True or false? They were aware that he will be the descendant of? That he will be born in Bethlehem. True or false? That he will be a king that will restore God's kingdom. True or false? 
they had all the data. But what was the problem? They knew that he would rule in the power of God. But the expectation was that this Messiah will be a physical king who will restore the nation of Israel. What? Physically. With this kind of expectation. And that Jesus could not possibly be the Messiah that God promised Israel. True or false? The ignorance created by wrong expectation is very common today. True or false? We can have romance without real love. That's also an expectation, isn't it? Many of the douche got tired of their diet, tried to improve on God's recipe. True or false? Because they had what? Wrong expectations. Manna. They thought manna will be coming big. Then it turned into what? A goat. Wrong expectations. This is what many people are. God's recipe is based on his promises. While romance recipe is based on explanations. You see, we, 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 we are so ignorant about our daily life and fact. This Christianity that we think we know. You don't know. Ah. Uh, wrong expectations. That is a worse level of ignorance. The ignorance is the mothers of all idolatry. Ignorance. Uh, we can have romance without real love. Romance for the sake of romance can be destructive. Most romance begin with what? Charming sense of what? Falling in love, which can be what? That's what it is. Which is like basically taking, taking like a drug, alcohol. That's what we used to do. It's the same way with the love of romance. When you're so ignorant about this Jesus, all you want, the love of romance cannot go beyond two years. It's the same way when we love Jesus. You've seen when the day you got born again? It was all about romance. Oh my Jesus, you are the greatest one. You are, you are looking at all these Christians that have been in Christianity for five, seven years like they are backsliding. This intoxicating kind of love, which we call alcoholic, yani nikama drugs, it produce a chemical, a, a chemical deluge, which we call inundation. You start living in a world that you think, you know, if my husband didn't tell me I love you, he no longer loves me. This is what it is. When this becomes now abuse and addiction, it was not given. Because this love will disappear. This one, it only go for a short time. It will disappear. It comes with a zeal. It comes like a drugs. You, you abuse. You can't do anything. Because he didn't say, I love you in the morning. I will not cook. I will not do this. Because Jesus didn't give me a job. I'm not going to church. I'm not going to serve. That's what we call romance. But when you walk away from ignorance... This is what starts stepping in you. The brain is oversupplied in what we call underline. You know, dopamine, serotonin, all this stuff. The feel-good chemical, which causes us to want, to want to return to the source of that feeling. When it's not there, you just want to, to return to that source of that feeling. We are not saying that it is bad, but that is not what makes you. Researchers esteem that the human brain can only sustain that intense in love feeling. For a maximum of two years. Ideally a couple has worked on depend, you know, deepening their love and commitment during that time. So that when the intense feeling of being in love candles off, a deeper love takes the place. This is phase one of what happened. For those addicted to romance, this tampering of signal that it is time to find another person who will induce the same what? Euphoria, bliss, joy, jubilee. That's why people change. Change boyfriend. You know Jesus said, Great love, greater love that has no man than this, that he, that he lay down his life for his friend. There was no romance in an ingrate Luya, Kikuyu, whom Jesus died on the cross. An ingrate. He died for you. He, he, he's not even saying thank you. Is there any romance there? It takes you away from this superstition in the kama drugs. 
There was no romance in this life. Dying and agonizing death on a cross for an ungrateful sinner was in no way romantic. Man beaten beyond human recognition. Is there any romance there? Jesus was still in Matthew chapter 26. He's in Gethsemane. Just so in a talk about in a qua. Blood. There's no romance there. When you read all this in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, you see what basically it detects the quality of love that has nothing to do with emotions of romance. True or false? Love is patient. Love is. Love is. Are you seeing emotions there? Are you seeing romance there? Love covers a multitude of sin. Is there any romance in that? This does not mean that love is God. The fact that two people love each other does not mean that their love is necessarily holy. So love cannot be God. That. Satan erodes what? Mind with lies. Say, he erodes minds with what? Lies. That's what he's doing. That's why many people are still ignorant. A man might never be greater than his what? Never lie to yourself. Your thought makes you. Who you are in the mind, that's who you are. If you are ignorant, that is who you are. You cannot be bigger than your thought. After all, your life is controlled every day the way you think. If Jesus is little like this, that's why you sit down and worship him. Man is never bigger than his thought. As a man thinks in his heart. So, the battle of the mind has to be won before anyone can. You must win the battle of the mind. If you don't win the battle of your mind, you cannot overcome. To limit oneself is to do what? You've never known that. To limit oneself is to limit who? To limit God. It means Joshua and Caleb observed great opposition to the promised land. True or false? They refused to negotiate in their mind or their heart. Any what? When there is a limitation in your heart, automatically your God is limited. Thus, what we see is what? We get. We have a responsibility to constantly. Say constantly. Renew our mind with the word of God in order to promote our, our lives. A regular meditation on the word of God. Amen? Say amen. amen. It renews our mind. When you have things like voyeurism, you, you've seen a lot of pornography, a lot of things that you've struggled with it. When you want to renew your mind, read the word. Are you understanding? The more you read the word, the word removes, it elim eliminates you. It removes you from ignorance. It washes you. It rejuvenates you from the inside. It encourages you. When you sit, God gives you revelations. Do not be ignorant of certain strategy. Guard your heart and mind with facts that come from the word of God. I lightly recommend that you keep company with that. You can do what? Positive goal with. Amen? The Bible basically says in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17. Iron sharpens. So a man sharpens the countenance of his, of his friend. Again, I must state that. A man might never be greater than the company he keeps. What you keep, that is who you are. Therefore, choose a friend that has goals. Your level of knowledge or ignorance might be limited to the people around you. Choose the right people. When the Bible says in Proverbs 13, 20, He that walks with wise men shall be, but a company of fools shall be. These are scriptures. Do not be unequally yoked together with. That's what it is. Scripture and scripture and scripture and scripture. And finally the Bible advises that. Come out from. That's what it says. The greatest deliverance a person can have is for God to remove the veil of spiritual what? Ignorance covering is or her eyes. A child of God should have a designing word. Oh,